Ladies and gentlemen, it's Brandon Cruz Daily Fantasy Podcast, where I go and look at local leagues and strategies specifically designed for GPPs. This is a show for people who are already informed on daily fantasy sports and how these contests operate. If you have any questions related and ask or it isn't a stupid question, feel free to send it my way. And Twitter, Brandon Cruz DFS. Most importantly, take everything here with a grain of salt and use your best to make an entry initially by gaily addiction. That's not my problem. You know the drill. We're doing audio for the truck series, probably one for the cup series. Um, this week's interesting. Like this is this week is much more than just a okay. I'm gonna fill out my video. I can you know go over the pool, the, the picks. Like we got two things to dive into. Obviously, we're talking about the truck series race in this one, but the cup series race. I'm easily gonna probably put two and a half hours, three hours of research into it. And the reason I said, hey, I'm going to do a live show Thursday night doing research is because I, I think that's more fun. Like these are weeks where I kind of just want to talk and, you know, kind of brainstorm and think of how to approach this type of stuff. That's why I originally started doing this. I just did the YouTube part to, you know, be a visualization and help people out, you know, in case you're I don't know, brand new, don't know what we're talking about. Um, but yeah, for both the truck series and the cup series, I just, I kind of want to talk about the possibilities and what to do here. Um, cup series. I'm really, really interested. I'm going to have a lot of fun doing research this weekend. And, and I think it hurts, uh, a video if I, anyway, I think this is going to be more useful. So looking at the truck series race, well, I'm going to talk more about salary here because there's a few things to look at. So obviously you have the Kyle Busch, John Hernima check, um, decision here. What are you going to do, Brandon? Look, I'll most likely be 50% John Hunter, 40% Kyle Busch. Could flip either way. 50% Kyle Busch, 40% John Hunter Nemechek. Why is that? Well, because these are the two best cars here. And I would imagine one of these two guys runs away with the race. Uh, John Hunter Nemechek is obviously cheaper. However, if Kyle does what he does at the 1.5 miles in the truck series, he should pull away. He's starting second. He he should get the lead right off the bat. The only guy he has to contend with is his teammate, John Hunter Nemechek. And another thing we have to worry about is Kyle Busch, he don't give a flying you-know-what about NASCAR, man. If he can lead and then give John Hunter Nemechek the stage win, he's going to do that. We've already seen that in Atlanta. That's exactly what he did. And so do we see... Kyle Busch, you know, if he arrives off the trailer slow or if he thinks that he doesn't have it, I'm not saying he's going to, you know, be, you know, good old Dale Earnhardt and block for his team, but I think he's certainly going to go easy and kind of let John John Hunter Nemechek by, whereas John Hunter Nemechek is just here, man, he's here to win. He's, he's going to win the championship unless he does something stupid at Phoenix. He's by far the fastest, you know, regular car week in and week out. It's it's the it's the KBM show here. It's not GMS. It's all Kyle Busch Motorsports. And so choosing between Kyle Busch and John Hernemachek is is the main decision here. Can you play them both together unless you think that the two combined are going to lead the entire race? That that's about the only way I'd play them together. And even with that, I, I still think you need one or the other. And I'm just going to be pretty pretty even on them. Might do 10% of where I I fade them both. That's kind of why I'm going to end up with 40% on one. Um, but I imagine I'll, I'll have half my lineups built around one guy, half the lineups built around the other guy. Why is that? Who who would I go with? Gun to my head. I'd probably go Kyle Busch. I think Kyle should run away with this race. He's starting second. He should easily just walk away with it. Who 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 is he fighting here? It's John Henry Machek. You know, he, he is the only one there. Um... Uh, right now, I got Kyle projected to lead basically 75% of the laps right now. And the other 25% going to John Hernemachek. You know, unless both these guys whiff and just arrive off the truck slow, which I doubt that's going to happen. It's Kansas. Um, Kyle Busch Motorsports have, have always been good here, man. KBM was good. You know, Eckes almost won uh, the second Kansas race uh, last year. I know Lassard was quick. Chandler Smith, yeah, Smith was good in the uh, in the third race as well. And this is just off the top of my head. I mean, Kyle Busch Motorsports ha have been extremely fast here. Like the whole team in general has been faster here as an organization than other places. And so I think a Kyle Busch truck runs away with it. So if you're if you're building that way, who are the other guys in the 10K range? Are we going to really focus on them? Are we going to look at them? Well, you know, we'll we'll let's talk about Ross Chastain. You know, he's going to be in the Nice Motorsports car, the number 44. Well, how, how has Ross done in this car earlier this year? Well, 
if you look at, if I can control F and find Ross, for crying out loud, you know, if you look at Ross Chastain, you know, I could easily give him, you know, 28, 27, 25, you know, place differential points. Um, but looking at how he ran this year, he finished eighth at, or he was eighth fastest at Atlanta, finished seventh at loss, or eighth fastest at Atlanta, finished seventh at Atlanta there. That's not really going to do it. Um, what is the op? What was the optimal at that race? Because that's very. Let me look real quick. Because that is very interesting. Let's go find that. All right. So looking at the optimal for Atlanta, which why why are we looking at Atlanta? Because I wanted to see how Ross Chastain performed in that race when he started. Um, where did where the heck did he start? My bad. Where are you at, driver? Yeah, Ross Chastain started 40th in that race. He finished 7th, scored 70.9 points, and still wasn't optimal uh, because you had Kyle Busch get 88.15. You had Johnny Sauter get 49.45. Derek Krauss, 46.45. Uh, Ryan Truex, 45.45. Spencer Davis, 42 points. And Carson Fulcevar scoring 36. So why is this important? Because I don't think... Chastain is optimal. I don't think Briscoe is optimal. Certainly not in the car he's running. In finger, I mean, he's in the Roball car. And even with that, like, you know, I think he's going to probably be around 12th, 11th, 13th in this race. I don't think these guys are optimal. The only guy on the top in the 10K ranges is going to be whoever dominates between John Hunter Nemechek and Kyle Busch. Now, that does not mean you cannot score well, or the lineup cannot score well if you play Chastain. I think people forget that it's it's not just optimal lineup or absolute bust. You can still score well and not have the optimal lineup. But if you're talking optimals, I don't think Chastain is there because it, a perfect example of where he should have been, quote-unquote, optimal was... Atlanta when he scored 70.9 points now he was thirteen thousand dollars in that race so he isn't as expensive a thousand dollars cheaper however let me look real quick I wanted to go ahead and look at the total salary spent at the optimal lineup in Atlanta and it's 49 300 even if Chastain was at twelve thousand dollars I let me look again I was going to try and look at the optimal lineup at, at Atlanta because the total points it scored was 307.5. And I was going to be like, well, what, what did Chastain need to do here? But it would, it would have changed so much. The, it wouldn't even have been, I wouldn't even have been looking at the optimal lineup. You would have had to move a lot of people out to either get Chastain in or have Johnny Sauter not do well. Like all the values came in, like all the 7K guys, you know, showed up in that race. So Sauter, Kraus. Truex Davis, Hosevar. Um, and I think we're going to look at a very similar type of line of construction here this week at Kansas to where if you're paying up for Kyle Busch, you know, I, th I think everybody understands the, you know, quote unquote value plays there are. And there's basically just three that I really want to bother with. And it's Chase Purdy, Hosevar, and Brett Holmes. Now, everybody already knows I'm, I'm madly, you know, in love with good old Brett Holmes. You know, if he could just finish 18th for once, it, I'm sure it'll work out. Um, but yeah, I, I like Brett Holmes, and we saw how Sam Mayer worked in that car, what he did in, uh, in, in the last race he was in, where good old Sam started 40th and finished 9th. And so, I mean, that, that just showed what this car can have. Now, can Brett Holmes get there? Can the Arca Series champion get through the field? I don't know about that. I just... I'm going to keep projecting Brett Holmes for 18th until he does what Haley Deegan did and just con continuously show me that he's not going to hit that. Um, so I'll probably have a lot of Brett Holmes uh, due to the fact that, hey, Brett Holmes, good, he could still you know not do well. I have, I have ownership to Chase Purdy and Hosevar. But if you're building a lineup, what are you doing there? So you have Kyle Busch at $15,000. Let's say you throw Hosevar in there. Now you got an average of seventy four fifty left for your remaining four drivers. Oh, wait, look at that. It's looking very, very similar to the optimal lineup at Atlanta. Now, who else is in that 7K range? If you're building a lineup around that, who's in there that could possibly run well or that could possibly finish inside the top, you know, 15? You know, well, let's look through the grid. So we have, you know, Raphael Lassard starting 15th, $6,600. You have 
Chandler Smith, you know, like I just said earlier, Kyle Busch Motorsports trucks have been extremely fast here over the past, really over the whole, all the races at last year. And so Chandler Smith is at $7,500. Ankrum is at $7,800. Will Ankrum finally stop wrecking? Who knows? Eckes is at $8,100. Derek Krause is at $8,500. So you don't have to break the bank. I don't feel like I have to pay up for Sheldon Creed at $9,400. I don't feel like I have to pay up for Zane Smith at $9,100. I'd much rather go to Kraft and to Hill to Krause. And so if you're building a lineup that looks similar to the Atlanta race, the Atlanta optimal lineup, I think that's the way to go. And so, you know, back to... The, the discussion of the value plays. The only guys I really care about are Brett Holmes at $5,200, Carson Hosevar at $5,100, and where's where's the other feller at? And Chase Purdy at $5,600. Like those are the only three I, I really want to I, I want to mess with. Um, maybe you could talk me into Austin Wayne Self. Not sure I'm going to go there. Tate Fogelman at 35. He should be outscored by. Hosevar, if Hosevar can stay where he is, he should be outscored by Brett Holmes if he hits my, you know, 18th. If head to head Brett Holmes and Fogelman, Brett Holmes should quote unquote finish better than Fogelman. Chase Purdy should quote unquote finish better than Tate Fogelman. And so I don't feel the need to play Tate Fogelman because that would require Purdy, Hosevar, and Brett Holmes all failing before I think Fogelman would hit optimal or outperform them in terms of you know total DraftKings points and so pretty host of our homes only three guys i want to focus on the 5k range and you can really play you know whoever you want you know even in the 6k range if you feel if you feel love towards somebody maybe you'd like timmy hill at $6,700. So if you add that to the Brett Holmes, the Kyle Busch lineup, that's, that's still giving you $7,700 left to make it line up. Um, just very, very similar to Atlanta. And I think, you know, talking about the optimal lineup at, at Atlanta gives way more insight than looking at, you know, my grades or whatever, my projected guys, how I project them to do well. That's just how it's going to be. I, I should have a very condensed player pool. Uh, in this truck race of maybe like 14, 13 drivers, uh, maybe even less. Like I could argue that I might use 11 drivers and just spread them out in lineups. I think it's it's kind of that, um, you know, not easy to see, but, you know, I could make an argument for that. And so who would those drivers be? So John Hernimacek, Kyle Busch, I'll count them as one driver or one pick because I don't anticipate playing them both in one lineup. And so I would I would count them. I could make an argument for Chandler Smith. So that's two drivers. Austin Hill, three, because he's the cheapest of Creed and Zane Smith. And we've seen how well Austin Hill is. Like Austin Hill, it doesn't make sense that Austin Hill is less than Sheldon Creed or Smith. So right now I got three drivers. And pretty much the <laughs> a majority of that is Kyle Bush trucks. But it's John Hermanchek, Kyle Bush, Chandler Smith, Austin Hill, Hosevar. So now we're at four. Ankrum, now we're at five, you know, and Ankrum, it's it's almost like he'll get a top 10 or he'll wreck here. That's just how it is. So I'll throw Ankrum in there because he's $7,800. Raphael Lassard, a GMS truck that quote unquote should finish all right. So now we're at six drivers. Christian Eckes, starting 17th, should get up to the top seven, which I think Eckes is probably my favorite play here. But okay, now we're at eight guys, you know, I don't. I don't feel like I need to go down to Tanner Gray. However, I'll throw him in that pool as well. Maybe I can build a certain lineup that I like kind of, you know, double value playing, you know, two guys in the 5K range. And so I'll add him. So now I'm at nine guys. I'm not seeing anybody else I really want to chase over. Now we get to Chase Purdy. Okay, now we got 10 drivers. Um, Chris Wright. Maybe if he holds on, but I, I think those other 5K guys outscore him. So I'm not going to add him. Still at 10 drivers. Still at 10 picks there. Still going through the field. Not seeing anybody. Um, still not seeing anybody. And then we get to Holmes. So we got 12. And then we get to... Who else was the other guy? I just went blank. I missed one. Purdy. Purdy. So that's 11. Hosevar. Okay. Hosevar, Purdy. I, I get those guys mixed up. Anyway, that's like 12 drivers that I actually care about. 12 drivers that I that are just popping off to me right now in projections. I don't know. Like it, I I feel like that's the way it's gonna go. Now, if John Hernimacek and Kyle Busch do not score well, if they wreck, if they have failures, 
obviously that trashes any type of lineup that I'm building around them or around that type of price range because they're so expensive. It's not like they don't perform well and everybody else in my lineup can carry that. I don't see that happening. I'm going out of my way to build lineups around those guys, Kyle Busch and John Harry Nemechek, that is. But, you know, that that's how it is. That That's why I... I, I, people give a lot of shit to, you know, audio only podcasts and stuff, but, you know, just talking, you know, talking it out here, it's, it, explaining what I want to do and not having to go through a grade or here, or, oh, I see him project to finish here. Like it, those, those 13 guys, those 12 guys that I mentioned are the guys that I really want to work with. And it's going to take a lot for me to really get off those 12 guys. That's just how it is. Kind of same with the cup series. Uh, I, I kind of have a condensed player pool, an idea of what's going to happen. That's that's why the research is going to be so long. But thank you guys for listening. Um, yeah, thank you. <laughs> that's about all it is. Thank you for, for, for listening. I do appreciate it.